we have a wrong perception and a wrong definition of sales. The average definition people have when it comes to sales is the guy who knocks on every door. Come and buy. If you don't buy, eh? please buy now. Buy, buy, buy. You must buy. You must buy. I beg you to buy. And that's what average of us think sales is. And that's why most of us hate sales. We don't like it because we just have a picture. Come on. Can some of you be honest with me? The picture in your mind when you think of sales, can, can someone type it? It's not sweet. True of us. The picture you have in your mind is not sweet. But today I will give you a new picture. How many of you know Christiana Ronaldo? Come on. Talk to me. How many of you know Christiana Ronaldo? Talk to me. Who knows Christiana Ronaldo? Right? If you know Christiana Ronaldo, just come on. Type Ronaldo. Is it C, C7 or is it C9? We write. You know, aha, I can see Professor Felicia says, um, the goat. <laughs> By the way, Professor Felicia, welcome. Good to see you. She's a professor of finance. Thank you for joining. Right? If you think you like Cristiano Ronaldo, come on, talk to me. Right? Ronaldo, isn't it? Now, is Ronaldo more famous than Messi? Now, I've, thought, I've scattered it to this show. Right? <laughs> Who is more famous, Ronaldo or Messi? Come on, talk to me. Ronaldo or Messi? Let's see. Messi or Loye? Messless Messi. Okay? One and only Messi. Okay? <laughs> okay? No, no, the most famous. Don't say both of them. Who is more famous between Ronaldo and Messi? Who is more famous? Okay? I can see more people. I wish I could do a poll now. I just put it up so we, we can. But from what I'm seeing, Ronaldo is believed to be more famous than Messi. Okay? From this poll, from the answers you guys are giving me. Now, and I want to agree. And I'll tell you, how many of you remember the press conference Ronaldo was doing where they put a Coke, you know, beside on the table and they put water and he took away the coke. How many of you remember? How many of you remember how the shares of coke dropped by almost $5 billion? If you remember, type I remember. If you didn't remember, or you're not aware, type I don't know. In other words, it was a press conference, just like this. Right? Let's assume this coke. Let's assume this water on the table. Ronaldo just took the coke. He did not say anything against cocoa. He removed the coke from his table, and the Shares of Coca-Cola dropped by five billion. Right? I assure you, Messi cannot give you that. But do we agree that the fame of Ronaldo is not just because he can play football? Right? He is good, exceptional, undoubtedly. But do you agree with me that the level of fame is not just because he's good at, at playing football? He has a unique way he has marketed himself that some other players that are better than Ronaldo did not. True of us. Who remembers how Ronaldo stand to take free kick? Come on. Ronaldo fans, talk to me. The way he stands to do free kick. The way he walks. Even in PS3, PS4. <laughs> right? It is there. The signature move, the signature look. All of that, guys, is called branding. It's called marketing. It's called selling. Are we enjoying this class or not? Yes or not? If you're enjoying this type, I'm enjoying this. Right? What happened? Ah, the said was showing off of my head. Funny enough, it was showing me full here. Okay, but that's good. That's fine. Thank you. I hope you can see my full head now. That's not good. That's not branding. That's anti what I'm teaching. <laughs> because I need to sell myself like Ronaldo too. <laughs> okay? I need to sell myself like Ronaldo. So sales, ladies and gentlemen, is not what we often call it. It's not just about disturbing people come and buy um, you know, putting pressure on anyone. No, 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 no. 
sales, and you can write this down as my own definition. Selling involves mark, uh, you know, promoting or showing the benefit of your product and services to the potential customer, as well as what they will lose if they don't patronize with a deadline for them to take an action. Come on, are you listening to me now? Selling is offering the benefits. I didn't say the future, so this is where people miss it. Oh. Our next speaker is the sage. I love to call him sage. For me, if you have done 40 years in business, you are a sage, right? You are not normal anymore. <laughs> okay, you are grandfather. So he now, if you look at it, how many of you have ever seen Dr. Cosmos come and say, well, let me tell you the uh, futures in Ford or futures in BMW or futures in Rolls Royce. These are cars you sell, right? But that's not it. Selling is showing the benefits. That Listen, if you ride a Rolls Royce, it puts you in a class. Are we learning here? If you are you know, driving this type of car, these are the benefits of that particular type of car. So you are showing the customer the benefits of the products and services you sell. Hear this well. And then you are also giving them a deadline to take an action. This is also where people miss it. So you have told somebody the benefits, but you didn't give them deadline. The last element of good sales is scarcity. Right? So rather than, I, I'll give you an example. We're launching a new estate, right? It has governor's consent. Uh, we've already started pre-launch. And I'm going to do video in the next few days on the estate. Now, the estate is, of course, quite large. It's over 20 acres in, in, in Ibejuleki. But hear this. I want everybody to, to, to hear this. However, I only want to sell 30 plots because the rest of the plots, I want to build houses on it, are green and smart home. But I want to ask everybody a question. I need your answer, right? I need your answer. I want to sell 30 plots, right? Do you know, what do you think will make people buy more? Me just going there and talking about the benefit of the land and just tell them to buy. Or I go there and say, hey, good news. I have this land to sell. I only, I'm only selling it to 30 people. Only 30 units left, right? The deadline for the entire thing is also period. Who will sell more? Come on, I need an answer. The person who just came and said, already you know it's 30 you have. But if by not just mentioning it, do you agree? People will in their mind say, well, I'll buy later. They only sell land now. You know, I'll call them back in two months. I'll call them back in five months. I will learn in here. But by just putting a deadline, what has happened is that you've encouraged people to say, hey, if I don't take quick action, I will lose here. Are we learning here? Again, for a learning tab, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. Okay? Good. So my first point is to help you understand what sales really is about. My second point, ladies and gentlemen, is to talk to you about some elements of sales. Okay? There are a couple of elements. There are about seven things you must do when selling. Number one, prospecting. Everybody type prospecting prospecting what is prospecting prospecting is the process okay of informing people about your product and services to find out if they will be interested in most cases these people don't really they were not expecting your call so if you are doing prospecting via phone it's called cold calling i don't know if you remember cold calling so if you are doing prospecting via phone it's called cold calling you got numbers, I started calling the numbers. They were not expecting your call, right? When it comes to activation, some of it is physical, part of it is called activation, right? Where you go and you're talking to people. It's called prospecting. What you are doing there is to figure out, will they buy? Will they be interested? Uh, you know, are, are, are they likely? To, and you shouldn't be emotional about it. If they say no, move to the next person. No, move to the next person. You should expect more no's. When you are prospecting, guys, expect more news. Number two is called making contacts and qualifying. So now you've prospected, the person showed interest. 
you should immediately go and say, sir, when well, can I fix a Zoom meeting? Or when can I call you for a longer time? Because sometimes when you are prospecting, they don't have time to attend to you. Are we listening to me now? They don't have enough time to take all the information as at the time you're prospecting. So don't make prospecting the time you want to go into the detail or qualifying them. And what do you mean by qualifying? Qualify whether they can afford what you're selling, right? I've seen situations where people are selling a product. You know, I've said this a lot of time with our, our marketers. GTEx sells a, some of our products are a bit expensive. For example, our houses start from 100 million and above, right? If you want to buy a house from us, right? Even in Nigeria, talk less of you are buying in the US or Dubai. Right? If you're buying in Dubai, it ranges from between 300,000 to as high as 56 million. If you're buying in the US, it's moved from, I mean, $375,000. You put it in error, it's still, I'm sure, over 100 million, right? Now, imagine. I entered a Molue, hear this. And then I just say I'm prospecting. You know, and I say, this year, all of you will own a house. What will I hear? <laughs> what will I hear? Is it not amen? Everybody will say amen. I, I would say two of us. Now hear this. If I go to a golf course in Ikoyi, right? And team of golfers, people, all these rich men playing golf. And we're in the clubhouse, in the golf course. I now stand up and announce to all of them, all of you will buy a house this year. What, what will happen? Will some of them not even ease? <laughs> True of us. Now, between the Molware people and the Koei club, who can afford what I'm selling? Talk to me, guys. Who? <laughs> right? It's the people who are even easing. This is where many entrepreneurs miss it. We confuse interest for qualification. That somebody showed interest doesn't mean they qualify to be able to buy what you're selling. They may not qualify. So in the course of the next phase of sales, which is what? Making contact and qualifying. You now want to understand, can this person afford what I'm selling? Number three. Okay, uncovering customer needs. So even if he can afford, what exactly does he want? Does he want a house in Bejileki or you want a house in Leki or he wants a house in Banana Island, right? Or even he wants a house in Ikeja Jiari or he wants a house in Dubai or he wants a house in UK or he wants a house in U US. So you have to then know the need of the customer. That is number three. Number four, come on. I we enjoying this class. I need your energy, everyone. If you're enjoying this type, I'm enjoying it. Number four, making product and service presentation. Now that you've gotten all, the, you've asked them several questions, you've you know gotten to know all their needs and all of that, the next thing is to now say, okay, give me some days, I'll come back, or give me some hours, I'll come back with a presentation of what fits your need. Are we learning here? Or I'll come back with a PDF of what fits your need. And then you come back, give them what fits their needs. And, and of course, that is number four. Number five, uncovering and handling objection. Now, once you've presented their needs to them, the next thing is they'll be objecting, right? Some of them will say, I'm not sure I want this. Uh, how about something cheaper? How about something more expensive? Now, write this down. Always have an answer for likely objection before you make a call. Let me say this again. Always have an answer for likely objections before you make a call. So don't just rush and you're, you know, and you're just calling and then you don't have an answer because you must be ready to look. At the point of presentation, they will have some objections. So if they say it's too expensive, what would be my answer? If they say it's too cheap, what would be my answer? Right? If they say they need something else, what would be my answer? So have a variety of potential questions. You can use Google Keyword Planner. Right? What are the likely objection questions for house? Likely objection question for cars. So have a list of that. Number six, closing. Everybody type, show me the money. Show me the money. Come on, talk to me. Can we all type, show me the money? At the point of closing, you are not playing anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, at this point, show me the money. 
this is no longer uh, this is not the point of trying to explain at this point sir here's the form here's the invoice can you are you paying today right don't tell them when do you want to pay no 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 as are you paying today let them be the ones and say oh maybe i'll pay next tomorrow i'll pay in two days time but go straight right now you need the money <laughs> I, I somebody did this to me and it was crazy. I, I don't know if you know Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone happened to be uh, one of my real estate mentors. So I went for one of his training in his office in Florida. And he has this university similar to what we have in Sivakta University. If I, I partner Sivakta University after him. And so after the class, he kept talking about this is university. <laughs> True story. And so after the class, during the break, I then was telling them, oh, I'm interested in the university. I want to sign up only for this. Okay, hold on. Let's get somebody in sales. Guys, you will not believe this. When the guy in sales came, just say, hey, how are you? You're Dr. Steven? I say, yes. He introduced himself. Do you know the next question he asked me? I have never been shocked like that. He said, are you ready to pay now? <laughs> I'm like, wait, you know... <laughs> But do you know it worked? I paid. <laughs> right? I paid. He just said, are you ready to pay now? And I, I mean, I knew it would be odd for me to say uh, later because I was not disturbing them. I need somebody from this department. I want to subscribe for this uh, university. And then the guy came, introduced himself, asked for my name. And the next question is, are you ready to pay now? I had no choice to just say yes. He brought the form, swiped my card, the rest is history. Some of you, you now start another long story. Somebody say he wants something. I say, yes, sir. And, and you see, there are 10 steps to this product. There are 40 steps. What are you wasting time? Are you ready to, what, we're under closing. You are ready to go straight for the kill. We're learning. Come on, if you're learning type, I'm learning, I'm learning. Okay, number seven, follow up, follow up. You must understand that the first sale they made is just the beginning. Many of them, we call it 10 uh, uh, X, X raised to power five, potential from every customer. In other words, if the person bought uh, a property or a product of $10,000 from you, it means they can buy $10,000 times $10,000 times $10,000 times $10,000 times $10,000 in five places. In some cases, they are the one buying it. In some cases, they are referring their friends, their family, their loved ones. In some cases, you know, their personal, their testimony is opening more doors for you. Come on, are we learning here, guys? So you must understand this uh, as regards to, to sales. Now, are you ready for types of sales? If you're ready for types of sales, type, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Now, let me pause here before I get to type of sales. How many of you own a business and you think it's not your job to sell as a business owner? Just type one. If you think it's your job to sell, type two. Let me say that again. How many of you who are business owners here think it's not your job to sell? Type one. If you think it's your job to sell, type two. And I'm talking about people who just, you know, feel, oh, I need to, I'll just employ sales manager. I'll just employ this person or that person. Are you aware? that every founder, CEO, whatever title you are, are the ones that can bring the highest number of sales to the company. It's just that their own type of sales is not your, is not the sales manager type of sale. Are we together now? They are responsible for B2G and B2B. I'll soon talk about another type of sales. The CEO of the company stand a higher chance of B2B. B2B means business to business. So your business getting more businesses to do business, right? B to G, your business getting people in government. Does that make sense at all to do business? Are we learning here? So you don't want to carry the culture and say, hey, I'm the CEO now, my marketing manager will do it. No, there are certain transactions that yes, your marketing manager can do it, right? Your sales rep can do it. But there are certain transactions. You are not the one to close, oh, but your presence is important. Your personality is important. That's why you see a lot of big CEOs. You see, see them go on CNBC, grant interview. 
they see grant interview on, on, on big magazines, right? Are we learning here? Because what they are doing with that is that they are attracting B2B and B2G, right? Government agency will just message, ah, you know, chairman, uh, I think our department wants to do this business with you people, right? And they will reach out to them. So even as a CEO, I don't care how big your business is, there's still a version of sales you must still do. Are we learning here? So that many of us don't sit here and you are saying, why is Dr. Stephen teaching us sales? I should send my salespeople to him. Let him teach them. No. <laughs> you remember the title of today's training, sales, the lifeblood of a what? Of a business. Okay? Sales, the lifeblood of a business. And from talking about somebody like me, that in 16 years of running business in Nigeria, I have not taken one single loan from the bank, one, not even car loan, in 16 years, right? Of course, internationally, we take loan, but not in Nigeria. So how have we sustained ourselves? Is we must sell. Those work with me, no. We don't sell, we don't spend, right? We can only spend what we make, right? We can only spend what we make. So everybody understand that they must do some measure of sales, okay? Are we ready for types of sales? If you're ready, type, I'm ready. Types of sales, if you're ready, type, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I love a very engaging, interactive class, right? Because when you are doing uh, virtual conferences, people get carried away. Some people are on their phone. Some people are touching this. So if you don't tell them to type, <laughs> some attention is gone. So that's why you see me always saying, write something, type something. I need your energy here. I need your attention here. And I feed off your energy because I'm not seeing you actually. Right. So as you comment, I can feel that you are here. Else one will be wondering, hundreds of people are here. How? Right. Are they really here? <laughs> or it's just a machine. But when you comment, I know you are here. That's why sometimes I say, what country are you joining from? It gives the feel to the virtual training. So types of uh, sales. Number one, B2B sales. Here, and some of you can create a department in your company, B2B sales, is business to business. Business to business. Number two, B2C sales. This is where retail comes in. Business to customer, right? You are selling directly to the end user. Business to business means you are selling to another business. Business to customer, B2C, means you are selling to the end user. Enterprise sales. Enterprise sales, right? In this situation, sometimes the entire industry that you are selling to, right? The entire industry. And this is what happens in China. I don't know if you know that all your iPhone, even though it's an American phone, is made in China. If you know type, I know. If you don't know type, I don't know. The same plant that produce iPhone, sometimes the one producing Techno, is one producing Infinix. If you are aware, type I know. If you don't know, type I don't know. Right? So those manufacturing plants are doing enterprise sales. They are there for the entire... Are you aware that iPhone screen is made by, by uh, Samsung? Did you notice that every latest Samsung camera is always sharper <laughs> than, than that of iPhone? I believe... Samsung make sure they don't give the latest technology to, to Apple, okay? So that at least they can have the dominance in terms of sharpness of the pictures and quality. So sometimes you are seeing things and you don't know that, you know, it's just the label that you are seeing, you are buying. You see the same seller across all chain. Next is SaaS sales, S-A-A-S, -A -A sales, SaaS sales. Software as a service, that's the meaning. Software as a service sale. In this case, you have this product, you make it something people can pay every month. So Siratia University is like that, it's a SaaS, right? Every month you pay to access the portal, right? Every month it charges you automatically, that's a SaaS. So, so software as a service is another type of sales. Number five, direct sales. Direct sales. So direct sales is a situation one-on-one. -on -one, you are talking to the person and they are doing business with you. 
The next is referral sales. Referral sales is basically the person who did business with you or the person you know is referring somebody else to you to still do the same business with you. Number seven, social sales. Social sales. All CEOs, you must do this. All CEOs, you must do this. Everybody type social sales because this is where CEOs are missing it. In the day of social media, if you don't do social sales, you're on your own. Now, I want to ask a question. Who can tell me how social sales was done before social media? Can anybody tell me? How do they do social sales before social media? Anybody? By the way, they still do it in Nigeria. Um, MyDAP Capital says fax. No, MyDAP Capital, that's not correct. Television, yes, is one of it. Television is one of it. Billboard is one of it. Newspaper is one of it. Radio is one of it. But the one I'm looking for, you guys have not covered it. Parties, party, 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 party. Party, events, thank you. Events is one of the biggest social sales. How many of you noticed Dangote when he was still raising money for his refinery? Almost every Friday and Saturday is in one party or the other. Of course, his own class of party. If you notice, that by notice, <laughs> right? Okay. If you notice in recent time, he has reduced it. It's no longer a, mob, a lot of parties because now the refinery is up. He needs to focus on getting to sell, right? And the people who sell don't show up in party. But when you are raising funds for your business, sometimes you need to go to where high network people are. You meet, you talk. They are, what's the latest about your company? They are, we are doing this project. So we need you to invest. Come on, guys, are we learning? Right? So social sales, as a CEO, you must do that. Number eight, channel sales. Channel sales. Okay? Another word for channel sales could be community sales. A group of cooperative people. A group of, you know, um, you know, golfers. Okay? Selling to everybody in Koyi Club. You know, a particular channel, insight sales, account based sales. So here is you are the, you are the account manager, right? And your job is to make sure you don't lose that account, right? And they keep that. This is what banks do often. Let me go and get GTEx um, Homes account for my bank, right? And that's account based sales, inbound sales. Inbound sales, this is more of digital now. This is more of digital marketing. Outbound sales is also involving digital marketing. So in digital marketing, sometimes inbound sales involves sales funnel, you know, and all of that. And then you have the outbound sales. Are we guys, are we learning? How many of you think this has been so helpful? Come on, talk to me. Okay. Has this been helpful? Has this been helpful? <laughs> so I think I have five minutes more. So I want to see what I can do with my five minutes. I have not even gotten to half of my slide, but let me just mention the points. I will not explain. I have five minutes more. Next, I want to teach you is understanding your customer. The secret of companies like Amazon is customer centric. Are you aware that one of the secrets of GTEx Homes, if you're a client of our company, when you're doing birthday, we send you cake. Of course, you have to buy to a level. And it doesn't matter where in the world. Right? I've seen people reach out to me in, in London, say, Dr. Steven, your company sent me cake last month for my birthday. I was so overwhelmed. Thank you. I didn't even know how they did it. Right? But those things is understanding the customers. Right, being very customer centric. Every customer wants to feel special. They want to be treated special. And if you don't treat them special, right, you will not get the best from them. Approach each customer with the idea of helping him or her solve problem or achieve a goal, not selling a product or service. Are you hearing this? this is by Brian Tracy. Approach each customer with the idea of helping him or her solve a problem or achieve a goal, not selling a product and service. So you see, when I was telling that everybody can sell, it's just the mindset of selling 
or perception of what sales is that has made us to think we can't sell. No. You, because how many of us can help people? Come on, talk to me. All of you say you can't sell. Can you help people? Can you help solve their people problem? <laughs> can you help them achieve a goal? Come on, I need your answer. Can you help people? If you can do this, then guys, you are already selling. You're a salesman, you're a saleswoman. Number next, product knowledge. Product knowledge. Nobody should understand the product better than you. You should understand it deeply. The entire industry, you should get it. You should know how it works, how the industry works. You should know. I mean, the other day, the customers were saying that a car has over 5,000 parts. I never knew that. Right? That is a, an expert here. You must know your, your product in and out. You must have deep knowledge of your product in and out. Not that you say you're a business owner and say it's my salespeople that will do that. You are the owner of the business. I've always taught salespeople, you are not, okay, selling a product. You are selling yourself. Let me say that again. You are not selling a product. You are selling yourself. People are not buying product. They are buying you. Right? Number next, build rapport. Right? Establish rapport. Establish relationship. Right, build good relationship with the customer. Know that I mean, in the course of your interaction, ask question: When is their birthday? When is their children's this? When is that? When is that? Play with gifts, right? Once in a while, send them gifts. I've told all my staff. I said, look, if anybody buys a product from you, but guy, those who buy high net worth, and even a greeting card, you can't send to them in a whole year. That's not good. With the advent of technology. Even if it's a video you will do, I say, hello, happy birthday, ma. Thank you for being my client. I'm so happy. I, I, I pray God will bless you. Those little, little things matter. Okay? They matter a lot. Effective communication. You have to master the art of communication. Communication is not, is not monologue. It's dialogue. Let me say this. Until the other party understands what you are trying to say, you've not communicated yet. Please write it down. Quotable quote by me. Until the other party understand what you are trying to say, you have not communicated yet. Let me say it again. Until the other party understand what you're trying to say, you have not communicated yet. Next is negotiation skills. Learn to negotiate. Be flexible. Everything should not be cast in stone. Right? Ask questions. Okay, so how can I help you? What can I do to make us close this deal today, today, sir? Is there anything I can add to this deal that will make this deal to close? Right? Be a good negotiator. Last but not the least, I'm rushing, you can see, okay, because of time, is time management. Right? Spending a whole, all your time over one client and the client eventually does not buy, does not make sense. Manage your time. Know what they want. If they are not ready, move on to the next person. Don't just waste time. I do gist. I do talk. In the name of your time to do sales. Bonus point. Who wants bonus point? If you want bonus point, type I want bonus. I want bonus point. Okay? Bonus point. Okay? Continuous learning. That's the bonus point. Continuous learning. I just put in now for a PhD and a master's together. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? I just put in for a PhD and a master's together as I speak to you. <laughs> the day you stop learning is the day you start dying. You must constantly, constantly learn. Invest in knowledge. I couldn't just share my slide uh, because I have a new uh, I, iPad, I mean, a Mac system, so it's not showing. Um, but you must master that. Last but not the least, customer relation. Have a good customer care team that can keep following back with the team. And as a CEO, master reward for your team. Now we have 16 cars. Everybody says 16 cars that we're giving our staff. We give one out on Saturday. 
She's made over 600 uh, million in sales in this year for the first half of the year. She got a car. Next month, we want to give more. So as a CEO, reward your people, right? When I came back to Nigeria, all our 11 top sales people for the half of the year, I hosted them for dinner. I give them a special award. CEOs, are we learning? I give them just a special award. It wasn't even money. But you see, all of them have posted it. Many of them have started attracting more customers just because they did that. Okay?